let's dive right in. I'm going to assume that you've already downloaded the blend file from Gumroad. The link for that is in the description, and it is, of course, free if you are interested. But let's run through some of the features of the graphene and boron nitride here. You can see all of the default settings for render setup include ambient occlusion, blooms, green space reflections, and refractions so that you could use glass if you wanted to. I prefer to render these types of figures in Eevee just because it tends to be a little bit faster. And I've also enabled film transparent by default so that if you wanted to, you could put this on the back of a PowerPoint presentation or as an overlay without it blocking other features. In terms of the model itself, you can see that the graphene sheet is actually the one that is visible by default. So if I hit Z and come into material preview, very simply this black graphene and all of the materials are labeled appropriately. All of the atoms for the respective particle systems are in place as well. And the camera and lights are by default what comes with the scene. I just move them into a separate collection to keep everything neat and tidy. If you want to see the boron nitride, very simply just come over here, hide the graphene and enable the boron nitride. And you can see by default, I added just blue and green for the respective atoms. Green for the boron, blue for the nitrogen. And of course, change any of these things as you want for the final look that you're after. Let's actually break down the models now. We'll go back to the graphene. And you can see that if I come to the modifier properties, there are a number of things in place. This graphene plane is actually set up perfectly so that if you wanted to, you could extend this in any direction in X and Y using the arrays that are in place. So it will seamlessly extend that texture. I'm not going to do that right now just because it is actually a very large model as you can see already. So to do that would likely slow this recording. There's also a displacement in place and you can adjust this on top of the arrays to make it larger or smaller. So if you fancy something like this, and of course you can come down to the texture tab and change between different displacement textures at your leisure. Similarly, you can enable or disable particle systems for both the graphene and boron nitride. So I can simply hide that and the particle systems are all labeled very, very clearly and everything about them is set up the way that I like to use particle systems by default. So if you actually want to do Boolean interactions with this, because it already has vertex groups set up for the density, you can actually cut through this pretty seamlessly without having to worry about particles going all over the place. Finally, the wireframe is in place so that you can actually have this effect if you wanted to. You can replace original and you can actually engage or disable the wireframe depending on your preference. Boundary is enabled by default so that you have nice clean edges. And the last thing is, of course, there is a bevel in place. Now, I have left the bevel disabled in the viewport but enabled in renders just so that it is a smoother experience to actually use this model because, again, it is quite large. And that is sort of the same concept with the arrays. One thing worth mentioning is about the size of the sheet and the arrays and particle systems. Now, if you want this to be smaller at any point, simply tab into edit mode, select the faces that you want and delete the others. The particle system is actually set up by default to perfectly match the number of verts on this single plane. So if you are going to enable the array modifiers and use a larger sheet, you will have to update the number of particles appropriately. So simply come and multiply the number of particles by whichever extension you make. So obviously if you just add one array, multiply by two. If you add a two by two grid, multiply by four, et cetera, et cetera. And that is true for the boron nitride numbers as well. If we click over there, you can see there is one particle system for boron atoms, one particle system for nitrogen atoms, and the numbers are exactly matched to the number that you would need for an atom on every single position. Those are the basic walkthrough features of using these models. If you end up using them, please consider tagging me on Twitter or Instagram, both at CG Figures. And there is attribution information on the Gumroad file if you are so inclined to do so. Again, these are free models and I encourage people to use them and explore them and point others in their direction so that everyone can benefit. So as always, thanks for coming out. If you found this useful, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, and until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.